in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you're welcome to another spirit filled message on 50 centric message if you're new to this channel I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted unto you and then God is going to visit you always thank you for watching be blessed right for reference Proverbs chapter 6 from verse 16 to 19 the Bible talks about six things that the Lord hates a heart that devises evil, one that sows the seed of discord. All of these things God hates. Proverbs 6, 16 to 19. Another scripture. Romans 16 and verse 17. Romans 16 and verse 17. Romans 16 and verse 17. He said, now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which we have learned and avoid them. Is it in your Bible? So when you become one who is given to evil speaking and backbiting, the Bible says to avoid you. It may be the reason why some of us don't have friends. There is no lasting relationship in your life. The lifespan of any relationship in your life is two weeks after two weeks you've gone to say something to tear down people and they say no 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 this person the next time another person wants to come they will advise that person and say be careful with this lady be careful with this gentleman yes he prays in tongues but he can tear you with envy and tear you down with evil speaking i forbid that over your life in the name of jesus titus chapter 3 and verse 2 Avoid evil speaking, avoid backbiting. Titus chapter 3 and verse 2. The Bible says to speak evil of no man and to be no brawlers, but only provoked and it thinketh no evil. Rise above offense. Number 4. Am I right on that? The fourth key. If you want to maintain strategic destiny relationships, practice forgiveness and tolerance. Write it down, please. Practice forgiveness and tolerance. A man and his wife one time were quarreling. They had a misunderstanding. They were about 12, 13 years in marriage. And when they met the counselor, the woman was crying and she said from the day she got married, she had never found joy, that she's never been happy. And the man looked with shock on his face and said, so all the laughter and the joy, the trips, the travels, what happened that you're saying you've never been happy? And the counselor told them, he said, that's how women talk. She doesn't mean what she's saying. She just means I am offended right now. And the way she interpreted her offense is to say from the day I got married, I've never found joy and peace in this house. And the man stood there shocked, wondering all the birthday gifts, anniversaries, travels, and all the time she said you are the best thing that happened to me. What suddenly changed that you are saying from the day you got married? <laughs> I said that to teach you the difference between forgiveness and tolerance. Let me teach you the difference between forgiveness and tolerance. Forgiveness means to pardon a default. When you forgive, you bring pardon to an individual because of a default. But when you tolerate, you create a system of accommodation to manage a limitation that will happen again and again and again. Are you seeing the difference now? 
You need both forgiveness and tolerance. Remember how many times we go to God and say, Lord, just bless me and I will never disturb you again. God is not forgiving you. He has tol he's tolerating you because he knows you are coming back again for sure. <laughs> Look at me. The reason why many of you are giving yourself heart attack over relationships, all kinds of relationships, is because you do not know that you need both forgiveness and tolerance. If you keep forgiving what you should tolerate, you will cry every day. I repeat, if you keep forgiving what you should tolerate, you will cry every day. A talkative will always be a talkative. An introverted person will always be an introverted person. It's as simple as that. If a talkative tells you, forgive me, I was under pressure. I won't talk again. If you forgive the person, you are not wise. You need to tolerate. Because five minutes later, the person will say, don't think I, I meant what I said. I was talking like that because... <laughs> Practice forgiveness and tolerance. Are you seeing now that the person you are sitting close to, some of you, you need to forgive them. For others, you need to tolerate them. Let me give you two scriptures. Mark 11 and verse 25. Mark 11 and verse 25. Then I'll give you Colossians chapter 3 from verse 12 and 13. The Bible says, And when ye stand praying, forgive. If ye have ought against any, that your Father also which is in heaven will forgive your trespasses. You must learn to forgive. Colossians chapter 3 from verse 12 and 13. Colossians 3, 12 and 13. The Bible says, Put on therefore as the elect of God, bowels of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering. Next verse. Forbearing one another. That's the word there. Forbearing one another and forgiving one another. You see, they are not the same. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. It's very, very important. You must learn forgiveness and you must learn tolerance. Let me give you the remaining two. Number, is that five? What is the fifth key to maintaining strategic destiny relationships? Write this down. You must be an active contributor to the growth of the other party or the parties involved. You must be an active contributor to the growth of the other party or the parties involved. You must be an active contributor to the growth of the other party or the parties involved. In Acts chapter 20 and verse 35, very popular scripture. The Bible says there that it is more blessed to give than to receive. There are many people whose relationship is called parasitic relationships. They are users, they are takers, they are not interested in giving anything. The day they call you is because they have a need. The day they come to your house is because they have trouble and they have exhausted all their options. Can I tell you this? Nobody will be indefinitely committed to you if they know that you are just a user and a taker. The world does not embrace and celebrate users. You must be an active contributor to that relationship. Now please look up. Even our relationship with our precious Jesus it looks like we are serving him and just serving him until you see what he has given us and he continues to give us. The breath that we have, the life that we enjoy, the health, the favor, all of these great things. When we begin to count our blessings, 
and to name them one by one. The hymn writer says it will surprise us what the Lord has done. Are we together? Let me tell you this. Never commit yourself indefinitely to any relationship that does not actively contribute to your growth. The contribution is mutual. It is dangerous to be the only one giving the prayer. The only one giving the money. They are giving the support, giving everything. And the other party, all they are doing is just to be taken. No, it's a dangerous kind of relationship. I used to have these interesting people because by the privilege of God's grace, I try and do my best to be there for as many people. Um, and there are all these people who is when they need help, you just get a text. Calvary greetings, apostle. In the name of Jesus Christ. It's been a long time I've not kept in touch. That text is following the real text coming now. Then they say, sorry, just to let you know that in my rent, we have come again. I hope you are not angry. For one year, they don't care how you are, whether you woke up, whether you cried, whether you laughed. That's none of their business. The moment there is a need, here they come again. There are some of you, you are like that as you are looking at me. Even your biological parents, you don't send them a text to say, God bless you. But when there is a need, when you have a bad dream, something is pursuing you, you are coming from your village. All of a sudden, you call somebody and say, sorry, um, it's been a while. Did you say you have a conference somewhere? Can I tell you this? Nobody becomes indefinitely committed to you if you don't pay attention to people. Relationships are investments. It's fraud to want a return over an investment you did not make. Let me tell you sincerely, and I say this by God, as busy as I may seem to be, there are people whose call I cannot ignore. Because of the level and the extent of investments they have made in my life. There are people today when I call, no matter what they are doing, they will stop and pay attention to it. Because of the level of investment I've made in their lives. Now let me tell you the mistake with our world. Don't want to sit in a position of intimacy over a relationship you did not invest in. They met Jesus and the mother of James and John said, can you grant... That my sons will sit at your left and right. Jesus said the space is available. But there is a condition. Can you drink of my cup. And be baptized with my baptism. There are people today. Even if I wake them by 2 a.m. And I tell them listen. I'm stranded at the road. They will get up and drive to come and pick me. Not because I'm a man of God. Let me assure you. Every relationship does not hold the same value. There are relationships that many, there are people who can give up anything for certain relationships. I've had the honor and the privilege of meeting many of our fathers of faith. I am amazed that as busy as they are, there are strategic relationships that regardless their schedules, they will invest in with joy and with honor. Don't expect me to give you the same attention with someone who thinks I am valuable to him or her. It can't be the same way. We're wrapping up. Let me have two people. I want to teach you something powerful. God bless you, my friend. You stand here. Just stand, turn, face. Now, my friend, stand here. Now, watch this. If this gentleman cares about me so much, are we together now? That every time I meet him, maybe he's holding a bottle of water and saying, Apostle, take. You may need this to quench your thirst. And every time he's saying, how are you? How is your health? How is your body? Everything that involves my life is interested in it. You cannot expect me to be committed to this man the same way I will be committed to someone who maybe one day only when he has a need and he will send a text and say, Apostle, bless you. Can you speak over my life? 
today is my birthday. I will speak. God bless you. God add years and wisdom and life to your years in Jesus' name. Amen. But for this man, if he tells me, Apostle, I have headache, I will buy him a pharmacy, not a drug. Is, is someone getting it now? Why? Because he has placed value on my life and my destiny. I can see how my life has advanced because of his contribution. I will not ignore him. Please hear me. Next time you see men of God or your lecturers, pay attention to certain people within the boundaries of purity now. I'm teaching you this. That when you see people pay attention to certain people more than others, don't get jealous. Find out the investment and the contributions they have made. When I was thirsty, you didn't bring me water to drink. There are people today, I have blessed them generally. I have not made any significant personal investment in their lives. I would be stupid to expect them to give me such attention. I can't demand that. Because I've not made the requisite level of investment. Now look up please. You can be this man. Who pays attention to the people that matter to your destiny. Or you can be this man. Who does not care about anyone. But wants to claim a stake in people's success. The moment people succeed, you say, remember, I prayed for you in the secret. Let God who sees you in the secret reward you there. But since I did not see you, for sure you will not get anything from me. Is someone learning? This man you see, come Pastor Sam. I will tell you one of the reasons why almost every year I think without fail I come here. For many people they wonder, they wonder why is it? Number one, because I love Jesus. Number one, because I sincerely love your general overseer and the entire leadership and the ministry. I believe in what God is doing. But listen, in addition to that, you see this man here? This man has mastered the art of investing in honor. Now, I'm not talking of human worship. No, there are people what they are demanding for is human worship. That is nonsense. You see that? Every time you show people that you place value on them, there are people who have come for me to pray for them. I just laid hands and said, God bless you. Even me, I know nothing left me to them. I just wanted them to give me a chance to enter the car so I can go. Because the attitude they came with, I know that no matter how I pray, nothing will lead me to them. And I'm not talking of kneeling down. You can kneel down and still be standing. Could it be that this is why some of you have not received from the grace that is upon this vision and upon this ministry because everybody is the same to you it doesn't matter which speaker comes to preach you just look at them you can see old people like our parents here come to talk to you and you look at you are just laughing let me edit what they are saying i'm not sure they know what they are saying and it's not like you have any results most people who don't have results are the ones who sit down to assess the works of people who are producing results when i stand before great people I stand like a sponge with my heart open to receive. Yes, I'm a Berean, but I humble myself to listen and to learn. We are going to pray. You can be this man, ready to discern the relationships that are very important and strategic. You can be this man, ready to trivialize everybody, including Jesus Christ. What is there? He's the king of kings. Did I ask him to die? He said, no, I've given my life to him. If he can't make the, there are other people. There are people like that. Nothing is ever worth your attention in life. I want you to learn a lesson from this, your leader. 
Learn a lesson from him. Humility and honor does not reduce you. In fact, it multiplies you. I'm saying this because may God have mercy on us so that we don't become a very proud generation that, 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 that tries to show glamour over nothing. It is said that the empty gong makes the loudest noise. You know great people by their humility to honor the investment of God over others and their willingness to learn and to receive. This may be a hard teaching, but you will thank me for it and you will thank your leaders for it. You will go back to your various stations and the difference will be clear between you and other people. In one week, you will see that strategic people have gravitated towards your life and your life begins to move from one level to the other. Hallelujah. God bless you, sir. Please all rise. Let's rise up. What's that? So you're following. Number six. What is the sixth key to maintaining destiny relationships? Practice genuine love. Practice genuine love. Let me tell you something. I remember a few years ago, maybe like four or five years, a gentleman called me and was crying and was crying and was crying. True story. What happened? The gentleman said, I'm not lazy apostle. My final result just came out and I did very well, but I had one single course. And it was a second semester course, he said. And where will I get the money? Me that I was happy that at least I would rest. You know, I've, I, my mother has been waiting to just hear that my final result. And he cried and cried. And he said, well, he did not even call me to pray for him, maybe for a waiver or whatever it is. He just said, please. I should pray for him that God will help the mother understand. And then number two, that God will open doors of favor. But he said he believed that he did that exam well. And I said, really? So, true story. I asked the person, I said, which school is that? Which university? And he mentioned the name. I said, which faculty? When he mentioned the name, I said, are you a serious student? He said, yes. This and that and that. And I told him, I said, all right, may God bless you. Whatever happens, call me. True story. Little did the gentleman know that I had prayed for someone in their faculty not too long. And I called the person. I said, please, I searched for the text the man sent to me to thank me. And when I found it, I said, please, sir, I know you respect God and you respect me. There is something I want to ask you for. I said, ah, my apostle, what is it? And I said, there is this gentleman who called me. So, 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 and so is the name. And the man asked a few questions. And I told him, I said, there is a cause. Please. I'm not saying you people should go and compromise on standards. But maybe you may need to look into this for this gentleman. He cried and I truly understand his situation. And the man kept quiet. True story. He kept quiet for about a few seconds and he said, mm. he said, it is well. He said, no problem, I'll get back to you. About three or four days later, I received a text around 2 a.m. This guy said he can't believe it. God is a miracle worker. God is a this. God can wipe the tears of people. That can I imagine? Uh, they, I think they gave their, them permission and said, if it is a departmental course or something like that, they can waive it. And that they called him and the person told him that he will not tell him who said this, but they should pray. And the person was saying, Apostle, I don't know who God, and I kept quiet. When he finished, I told him, I said, make sure when God lifts you, you do the same for others. And the gentleman went. Can I tell you, every blessing comes from God through men. Delay comes from Satan through men to men. One man who should sign for your promotion can say, your father offended me, you will remain here. 
and the person will sit on it and you will remain there as if God is not answering your prayer. Can I tell you, when God says yes and men say no, yes remains in the realm of the spirit. It will take both God and men to say yes for yes to manifest here. Rise up on your feet. Let me give you two scriptures. Proverbs 10 and verse 12 talks about love and I believe it talks about a friend. Hatred stirred up strife but it said love covered all sins. John eleven thirty five, 35 popular scripture. By this shall all men know. John is it 11? Please look for it for me. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples when you have love one to another. Can someone find that scripture for me? I think I made a mistake here in my text. By this shall all men know. Someone search it for me, please. Huh? John 15. Who has found it? John John 13 Okay 1335 I wrote 11 here my apologies John 1335 Let's read it together finally before we pray By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples Now everybody stand please Thank you for your patience I'm about to give you an instruction right now and then we'll pray Please everyone stand because your life is about to change. Hallelujah. Now listen please. Listen carefully. There are four expressions I learned in my life that worked wonders in my life as far as relationships are concerned. Number one, please. Write it down. That word please is a miracle word. It can open doors for you, even if it's demons that close the door. Please, is a statement that shows that you have value on people and you show courtesy. Please. Number two, I am sorry. These are miracle expressions that have worked wonders in the lives of great leaders. Please write it down. Please, number one. And then number two, I am sorry. Don't say sorry. Who is sorry? Every time you say I am sorry, you demonstrate maturity. You demonstrate responsibility. And you bring people to a point where they remember again that you are human. I am sorry means I can be better than I was yesterday. Number three, God bless you. Write it down please. God bless you. These are miracle expressions that I have lived with in my own life and I can tell you the wonder they have worked in my life. God bless you. You know what it means to say God bless you? It means I use the authority that I have as a believer to declare unto you that you are empowered to advance or empowered to succeed. Now, the last word has been abused or the last expression. Nevertheless, we are believers. It is a very powerful one. It's called, I love you. Unfortunately, our world has polluted, destroyed, and whatever it is. If you tell somebody, I love you, the person will ask you later, were you serious? When you are saying something that is supposed to be I won't ask you to use that one now. <laughs> but for the purpose of this discussion, the first three. Well, to the pure, all things are pure. Let's do a quick rehearsal. First expression, please. So next time you want someone to stand up, don't just say stand up. You pick a call and say, call me, call me, call me. You will lose your destiny helper forever. Please, can you call me back? 
Someone say, please. Learn it. Manners that make for victory. Say, please. Number two, say, I am sorry. Your neighbor has been waiting for you to tell him. So say it finally. Say, I am sorry. We quarreled this morning, but that's all right. I am sorry. Number three, say, God bless you. And if you love Jesus and you believe your heart is pure, say, I love you. Now hear me. The assignment I'm giving you in the next two minutes, I want you to walk to someone by your left and right anywhere. Find someone and tell him, God bless you. Tell someone, I am sorry. Tell someone, please. You shouldn't be standing. Don't come to me. But go to someone. Bless them. Build strategic relationships. I'm counting down now. Ten. Nine. By one, you should be back to your seat. Eight. Whether you know them or not, tell them I value you. God bless you. Thank you for being a child of God. Regardless of our differences, I decree and declare that you are a child of God. I place value on you. Any day you see me, know that this is one who loves you sincerely. Rush back to your seat now. Give Jesus a big shout of praise. Hallelujah. Hold your hands together. I'm wrapping up. Thank you for your patience. I need you. You need me. We're all a part of God's body. Stand with me. Agree with me. We're all a part of God's body. It is His will that every need be supplied. You are important to me. I need you to survive. I pray for you. You pray for me. I love you. I need you to survive. I won't harm you with words from my mouth. I love you. I need you to lift your hands together. It is his will that every need be supplied. You are. In the name of Jesus Christ, please lift your hands. Father, I have brought your word to your precious people. I believe in their lives and their destinies. I truly do. Lord, I know that among these people who are standing before you are champions, history makers, mighty men in the making. I have taught them, oh God, on the power and the value of destiny relationships. My prayer for you, therefore, is that my God, who is also your God, will bring destiny relationships to your life. That as you live by these principles you have learned, in addition to these miracle expressions I just gave you, may they open strange doors for you. May they move you forward in the name of Jesus. For in Jesus' name I pray. So for the remaining part of this conference, make sure you use these four words. Before I go back to my seat, you will shout four of them. Number one. Number two. Number three. Finally, number four. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it.
see you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.